Hello, welcome along to volume 10 of the Supreme Command of Forge Alliance Forever Community Cast Library. I hope everyone's had a excellent week in between episodes. I've had a pretty good week, thank you. Things are going nicely. It's getting a busy time of year, but that's just the way life is, and I'm enjoying things right now. Uh... <laughs> I was actually driving to the shops. It's probably a pointless story, but I, I, I enjoy telling it anyway. Um, I drove past this house, and it's completely kitted out for Christmas. Lights, tinsel coming out of the windows, all sorts of horrible, tacky crap. So we are not even in December, and people are already putting up uh, Christmas decorations. So I, I reported this heinous crime to the police, and whilst they uh, had great sympathy for the horror I had witnessed, they actually assured me that putting up Christmas decorations in November is not a crime. How, why, why isn't it a crime? That's what I want to know. <laughs> um, Faf-wise, it's been a mixed week, Faf-wise, guys. I've lost 100 points in ranking this week. Sad face. Uh, I've not been playing very well, uh, but also the the amount of stacks. I don't want to get into it. I don't want to get into it because I've been arguing a lot this week with with people that like to host games and stack them. But anyway, I'm not going to go on about that. Uh, it's been a really good week for the channel. Uh, I've spent a little bit of time posting ads in Aeolus, um, plugging episodes and, and such. And I was actually surprised at the amount of people taking the time to uh, offer thanks and positive support for the channel. So if you're one of those people who've taken the time to message me this week, I thank you. And as always, I'm still on the lookout for replays, guys. So please help a sloth out this Christmas and give me your awesome ideas. Help a sloth out. Anyway, <laughs> last week we enjoyed an epic battle of a mixture of average and pro Joes. In this week's episode, we're climbing to far loftier altitudes, featuring a selection of top pros. Or are they? Enjoy. Hello and welcome along to the 10x10 map, Wonder Open 5 vs 5 version 3B. We'll call this team at the top left diagonal corner area, Team 1, and this team in the bottom right kind of diagonal area, Team 2, starting off with the players for Team 1. And going straight to the air position in red, weighing in at a colossal 2,300 ranking. Really looking forward to seeing what this guy can do. It's Little Sid, or Lil Sid. Second up for Team 1 in blue, going Master Cyber Race. I would pronounce this guy's name as Alayuka, but I watched one of Heaven's videos the other day, and uh, Heaven calls him Luca. Being it they're in the same clan, I'm going to assume that... Uh, Heaven knows how to pronounce his name better than I do, so I'll go with Luca. Thirdly for Team 1 in his shitty customary teal colour, weighing in at 1400, it's Foden going UEF opening first land. And second up, his mid and clan partner is Bulletproof Bob, also going UEF in green, opening first land, Bulletproof, weighing in at 1400. And then lastly, 14 1 in yellow, another UEF drool machine. It's Clinch, weighing in at 1600. And 14 1 starting, sorry, 14 2 starting off in the air slot, going pink and gay on. Suits you, sir. It's AI random. AI coming in at 1600 for this replay. Second up for Team 2. I just paused momentarily there as, uh, as Wrecked Machines looks like he's gone first, second hunter, third scout there and already raiding the base of Luca. Very early aggression here from Wrecked Machines. Wrecked Machines going Master Cyber Race, playing in green and is another colossal ranked player on this one coming in at 1900. And uh, thirdly for Team 2, uh, weighing in at 1700, playing in Cyan as Gaon. It's Big Bang. Uh, not doing too much right now. <laughs> Next up for Team 2, in Old Man Grey, the lowest ranking player of this replay by uh, a sizable distance, I would describe it as, coming in at 1200, still very respectable, still higher ranked than, uh, ranked than I am, it's Corliss, and uh, Corliss uh, in UEF there, by the way. And then lastly for Team 2, 
Uh, going Space Pirate Seraphim in red, it's Okpuk. Okpuk, the third highest ranking player here at 1800. Should say joint higher, third highest there, if I'm being politically correct. And Okpuk here going land all day long early on. Uh, the air slot's pretty imbalanced here, although finding someone to balance a 2300 is no easy feat there, so AI Random probably just looking to survive and uh, stay competitive with his mirror. And then the other key areas of this map are of course on Open Wonder the flank positions. Uh, huge, huge area to which to fight over with lots of reclaims and uh, additional mass points to compete here for. And already uh, we see Wrecked Machines and Luca going into a toing and throwing of raiding parties here and we saw the early raiding party going forward from Wrecked Machines. I, it doesn't look like he managed to inflict too much damage on Luca there and Luca responding getting multiple raiding parties going here and we've got a T1 bomber that's been whirling around the top of Wrecked Machines base for a little while now being annoying as they are. Wrecked Machines also with his own T1 bombers over the units of Luca. But as I was saying, Luca here getting some raiding parties along the bottom and coming in over the top as well. And already the the low unit count of Wrecked Machines looking spread very, very thin here. And Luca is having lots and lots of joy here along the bottom side of the map. He is well and truly behind the units of Wrecked Machines. At least two Maxes and a few Engineers being taken out here and there may be a few more. Only now is Wrecked Machines managing to re-divert his units to counter the raiding party of Luca. But Luca already coming in with another raiding party through the front door now. And he needs to keep that moving. And we've got more chaos going on at the back. It's amazing what a single Mantis and a Scout can do in the early, early stages of these types of games in the hands of experts. And I would definitely class the likes of Luca and Wrecked Machines as experts, or at least their ranks suggest as much. And if we just look over on the front lines now, Wrecked trying to cut off more raiding from Luca, but aggressively pushing forward with his ACU now, relying on his Mantis at the back of the base to clear out the raiding parties of Luca. And although the more aggressive start came from Wrecked Machines, Luca having much more joy here against his mirror, causing a lot more problems for Wrecked at minute five than what uh, Wrecked was causing for Luca at minute two. And <laughs> we see here a little false PD position there. That's sneaky shit that is. And we've got a, a single Medusa there firing on the false PD position. But back on the bottom far left, finally coming, uh, contending with the incursion forces from Luca Wrecked, clearing out those Mantis and now clearing out the bottom left hand corner where Luca has expanded into claiming these three mass extractors and it looks like that Rett is starting to get a handle on the situation once again. Just taking a quick look at the air uh, play here and we've got uh, AI random at T2. Is that a mercy? I think AI random going into Mercy's here. We're going to have to keep a close eye on that. And uh, what's Lil Sid doing at the top here? Also at T2, not building anything with his T2 factory right now. Still producing engineers and he's trying to get T2 power up. That's why that factory was paused momentarily. And on the, up in the uh, top kind of right corner area now, we see masses of T1 units being stacked up by Clinch here and Okpuk also with a sizable contingency of T1 units 
Otpuk does have a gun upgrade on his com and is edging into the position of Clinch's formation. Just getting some early kills there, some good veterancy going. Clinch has gone the other way with his com upgrade and has gone T2. He's already got one triad up, which is now bearing down on the ACU of Otpuk. And he's just about to finish his second triad. And Clinch now moving in those units. He's got a lot more units than Otpuk. And Otpuk going to have to be careful there. And I'm just checking in here on AI Random when we do have Mercies swilling around. Where is Lucas Com being stashed? Lucas Com on an upgrade here. No anti air in the unit mix of Luca and AI Random with an early air control here. And we've got four, four Mercies here which are going, going straight for the ACU of Luca. But back up on the right, and Ogpuk is in full retreat. His units have been absolutely decimated, and Clinch here is going to clinch the kill of Ogpuk. But back down on the left. Luca! Oh! 450 hit points left on Luca from the Mercy attempt from AI Random. And the forefoot's coming in now, and Luca's gone down as well. <laughs> What a crazy 30 seconds there. Luca going down on team one from a prolonged mercy snipe from AI Random with absolutely no air support from Lil Sid. But on the top right of the map, clinch, clinching the kill of Okpuk, if you'll forgive the horrendous, horrendous pun. Uh, <laughs> clinching the, uh, the scalp of Okpuk. And I was expecting uh, Okpuk to seriously boss this flank for his team. And he needed to do so really, considering the air disadvantage that Team 2 find themselves in. But uh, this game being blown wide open. Two 1800s extracted from the game at under 9 minutes. One from each team. And now it's going to be a case of... Who can expand and rebuild the quickest? The 1800 rated wrecked machines for team two or the 1600 rated clinch for team one. And the middle positions are also going to have to help out filling in these flanks. Bulletproof is going to have to help out clinch filling in this right hand side as he contests now with, well, Bulletproof shouldn't have to do too much actually because it's against a 1200 guy. Don't mean to be rude. I mean, I'm shit. You know, everyone knows I'm shit. <laughs> but uh, Clint shouldn't have too much to deal with. It's the other way around. <laughs> That's what I meant. <laughs> Foden having to fill in the position of Luca. Yes, that's that's better. Now my head's making sense of it. So, yeah. Foden now. Bob is going to have to support Foden, who is trying to expand onto the left. I'm sorry. I should really restart the cast, but uh, it's so hard getting those two kills in. I'm, I'm not going to do it again. So we've got uh, Clinch now trying to get some units around the back of Otpuk's base while he tries to expand into this right hand upper area. Clinch trying to disrupt that progress, doing a fairly decent job. Uh, Call us getting some units over to the far right hand side just to deter Clinch from pushing any further. And we do have TML on the field from Bullet. Uh, what's he going to do with that TML? Well, it looks like he's already been busy with that TML, taking out some mass extractors of Call us there. So, Team 1 applying nice pressure to Corliss as he tries to come to grips with having to take full responsibility for the right-hand side of the map for Team 2. But over on the left-hand side, we see a T2 pimped group of spam. I say pimped. It's got a few... We've got a few pillars in there with some parashield, but predominantly still at T1. But uh, Rep Machine's here with zero T2 in his mix just yet, so... Similar numbers, but with some T2 sprinkled on top. Foden there, looking pretty 
dangerous and looking like he wants to be aggressive. And AI Random just pointing out that that is actually TML that's being thrown at Corliss if he didn't already know. Uh, just checking upgrades and conversations. So AI Random has reported scouting some mercies being stashed by Lil Sid and just telling his team to prepare for mercy attempts. I don't actually see any mercies on the field from Lil Sid, so they're probably already dead. So I'm guessing that attempt failed. We'll never know. I mean, we will know because nobody's dead. But you know what I mean, right? <laughs> um, Foden doing a decent job here of getting into this left-hand area, trying to take up the former base of Luca. And Rack Machines has quite a lot of spam and is getting some T2 units into that mixture. I see a Rhino and I see a Banger T2 anti-air to those that uh, don't fully have familiarity with the unit names themselves and now we see a push coming in from Foden he's trying to drive down and flank the position of wrecked machines but wrecked machines seeing that movement and pushing his forces across and he's gonna squash and push Foden back up the map the middle of this map looking pretty quiet just for now big bang having not done too much so far and there's why Big Bang going straight to T3 and um, pretty early harbingers on the field now for Big Bang and by extension Team 2 and those harbingers already menacingly making their way to the front lines and Foden is gonna have problems pretty soon with those unless he could get his ACU in to OC them back over on the right hand side and Corliss also doing a decent job of expanding into his former teammates base not nearly impressive as the efforts of Foden but practically achieving the same level of success and Clinch looks like he's trying to apply pressure but hasn't really got the numbers to apply any real pressure just yet and in fact, it's Corliss that's on the charge, clearing out some expansion maxes of clinch. And we just check back in with those harbingers now, and they've gone straight up the middle, trying to get into Foden's core base. And we see Foden trying to counter this with T1 bomber spam on these harbingers, but the harbingers now into the vulnerable area of Foden's core base and there goes the shield bulletproof pulling his ACU across here and we also see the ACU of Lil Sid driving down nice teamwork brewing from team one from bulletproof and Lil Sid recognizing that they have to get in and support Foden doing so with their ACUs so that push costing Foden one T2 power generator and a shield not sure what that's given Foden any problems in power generation it, it hasn't I'm assuming that uh, he's surviving on team overflow but he is surviving and that's all that matters Rack Machines now still trying to contest this bottom area these three maxes here have been to and throw and it looks like the most recent victor is going to be racked starting to rebuild those maxes now and where else on the map can we see t3 well we've got to asf being produced by ai random looks like he's been building them for a little bit but uh, with more asf is lil sid so lil sid also at t3 r and this is probably a good time to take a quick peek at the eco situation as we just look here another fracker unfolding between clinch and Corliss 
both units not looking want to, to push too far forward here, just kind of jockeying along this imaginary front line. We do have some supporting fire going down from a T2 clink hammer thrown up by Corliss here, just deterring the units of clinch coming too far forward. In terms of attack, clinch still at T2, but uh, I would describe it as full T2 spam. Corliss not quite uh, full T2, still uh, still only at T2, but uh, still has a lot of T1 factories as well, producing T1 units there. So Clinch definitely with an advantage on land spam between he and his mirror. And we see another T3 push now coming forward from Big Bang. Big Bang now bringing up some anti-air and support and firing on the supporting engineers assisting the brand spanking new T3 HQ of Foden and Bulletproof now coming down with his ACU and as, as is little Sid and those Harbingers backing off but running straight into the ACU of Foden. Foden no OC as yet, there's an OC so those two Harbingers gonna die but that time more damage inflicted this time on the eco of Foden. I don't think you'll be too concerned about those factories because Foden is now at T3 and producing Percival straight into Percival production. Uh, but uh, Foden will want to get those maxes rebuilt ASAP. And we see now <laughs> that uh, Big Bang continuing with raiding parties of troublesome harbingers, this time chucking them at Bulletproof and Bulletproof having sent his ACU to assist Foden's base, now having to bring his ACU back to his own base as he tries to push back the Harbingers and the Harbingers, or Harbinger, just taking out a T2 mech there and a TML. Let's go ahead and take a look at that eco situation just before things get too busy and perhaps unsurprisingly in one sense little Sid is on top of the charts for eco 138 mass income per tick what is surprising to me at least is the fact that AI random is only just behind him on 133 mass income per tick so AI random here doing a pretty pretty excellent job of keeping up with his vastly vastly superior opponent on paper of course and also bear in mind that uh, so far in this game AI random has killed someone um, Lil Sid ain't done too much I don't know if that's being unfair but uh, that's that's the way things are right now and I'm just looking in the air bases here it's not unusual to see air players going into cheeky shenanigans after T3 airs such as nukes etc but uh, no such things here we do just see Lil Sid has made sure that Foden has OC capability with the constant pressure that's being put on him by Big Bang that pressure has started to ease since Foden's hit T3 and has started getting Percival's up And Lil Sid also investing resources on getting some Sams up around Clinch's area. Clinch not doing a whole lot of that himself, which is pro probably why Lil Sid has seen fit to do that. He sees Clinch as being vulnerable to an air snipe. So that is good perception and counter by Sid. Lil Sid. <laughs> And very much similar to the what's going on on the bottom left. We see constant exchanges of this right hand area going on between Clinch and Corliss. But Corliss with the T2 artillery range covering these maxes. Uh, all that uh, Clinch can really hope to do at the moment is keep the maxes out of the hands of Corliss. I don't think he's got any real designs on taking those maxes for himself does Clinch. And we do see Clinch's ACU here, pretty vulnerable. He does have a level one shield upgrade and T3 on his comm, 
So 15,000 hit points on Clinch's ACU, but no anti-air with his ACU, uh, nor no additional shield coverage other than what's on his upgrade. And uh, we just also saw a, a T3 scout there from AI Random, so AI Random definitely would have seen uh, Clinch's ACU in that vulnerable kind of position, but uh, AI Random trying to make sure that he stays on top of the air game here making sure that his ASF count is at least competitive with Lil Sids and at the moment it is at least competitive. Although we do see Lil Sid branching off into restorer production, restorers with excellent anti-air capability, almost as good as ASFs, just a lot slower. So and AI Random now seeing an opportunity to maintain air dominance and bringing in his ASF and some very very tidy micro there from AI Random very effectively wiping out the ASF count of Lil Sid Lil Sid just branching off those restorers sending him over to the right hand side of the map and Corliss has gone down there we saw very briefly, I wasn't zoomed in on it, very briefly there, some Titans being pushed forward from Bulletproof. And I think I saw a flash destruction of T2 units there from Clinch. So I think Clinch doing most of the damage on Corliss there. Sorry I missed that. Technically I didn't miss it, but technically I didn't watch it either. <laughs> but uh, Corliss there going down at 21 minutes. Clinch definitely doing the dirty work on that, uh, perhaps Bulletproof just trying to send in those Titans just to make sure the kill was successful. And Restore is now helping out with the relentless forward pushes of T3 units from Big Bang. And Big Bang giving some of his parish shields over to wrecked machines that is Big Bang having energy problems I think Big Bang may have had energy problems for a, a little period of time there not too sure but uh, the ASF now of AI random coming in just to clear out more air units of Lil Sid AI Random does need to be aware that uh, whilst he does have air dominance, Little Sid is continuously continuing to build Sam's on Team One's side of the map, and he won't want to send his ASF over taking out that kind of stuff for too long. And we got another Mercy here from AI. Ra we got a lot of Mercies down here from AI Random. And what's what's they be going for? We see here Foden and Lil Sid with their ACUs under this T2 power generator, sorry, shield generator from Foden. And those mercies have definitely been scouted now by Sid. And Bulletproof starting to push forward with a mixture of Titan and Percival spam. And those mercies are on the move again. I daren't take my eyes off of these mercies, but surely they're going to run out of fuel soon. I'm not sure where they're going. They're heading over to Clinch. Could Clinch be the target? No. AI Random sending the mercies in on the forward push of T3 units there from Bulletproof. AI probably recognizing that the mercies had been scouted and getting a ACU kill with them was going to be very difficult. So just halting the forward push from Bulletproof that. And what have we got going on at the back? T3 power being thrown up by Sid. Sid also in the very early stages of a GC. Checking in on AI's base, AI also on a GC, farther ahead than his mirror is on his own GC, and hello, uh, 
it would appear that uh, Wrecked Machines has had to go. He's moved his ACU into the shields of Big Bang and transferred all of his assets over to Big Bang. So Big Bang now with a larger responsibility. Try to avoid another pun. Try to avoid another pun. Um, Big Bang also into a GC himself. So there's lots of GCs being thrown up right now. Don't see any fat boy being prepared by the UEF contribution of this match so far and we see now Big Bang having claimed the entire left hand side of this map trying to push forward with some T1 spam sprinkled with some Percivals into the meteor but far less numerous units of Foden and Foden just using his Percivals to kite the Medusas of Big Bang, or they were kiting, now they're just kind of charging in. And also we see some artillery fire being thrown down from Big Bang onto the Percivals of Foden. And one of the Fat Boys has completed. It's the Fat Boy from Big Bang. Big Bang getting that Fat Boy up very, very quickly. I shouldn't imagine that the rest of the Fat Boys are too far behind. AI's of Fat Boy is about two thirds done and Sid's is barely halfway so Sid's fat boy going up quite slowly and meanwhile clinch forever edging forward with his T3 ACU getting some ravages up so clinch effectively trying to ravage a creep <laughs> across the Ravager creep his way across the entire map and we now see uh, quite a sizable squadron of restorers being pushed forward here by AI Random just taking out the reclaiming engineers of Foden and that GC has been pinged And Bowden now sending in some T1 bomber spam, trying to start to wear the GC down. But uh, Big Bang there has got some para shields, trying to keep up with the GC, but not really absorbing too much of the damage on that second pass. And the GC now seeing some of the ravages from Bulletproof and is just deciding to sidestep and retreat slightly. And we see there in team chat now, AI, AI random saying, wait for my GC and then we'll kill yellow. So AI random's GC has finished. It's looking to partner up with Big Bang's GC, or should I say Big Bang's GC's. -er, as we now see a triple GC push here, forming from team two, Heading towards Clinch. And just zooming out for a quick overlook on the air. No clear air advantage for AI Random. Sid has rebuilt that ASF count enough to be competitive. And we see the GCs now homing in on the forward position of Clinch and Clinch seeing that a fair while ago and uh, started sending his ACU in a safer direction as soon as he saw what was coming. And we got Ravagers going out on these GCs. We've got GCs going on the Ravagers. We've got Percival spam coming in trying to kill the GCs. And we see here the Percivals of Clinch focusing on the far left GC. But the middle and right hands one coming into range now and those Percivals are getting seriously fucked up. Restore is being pushed in just to clear the shields and allow the GCs to vaporize everything as they walk through. And we've got supporting Harbingers with Paris shields behind. The forward position of Clinch is gone. The first GC of the, tr of the three being pushed forward are down. 
bulletproof pushing in his own Percivals now. And this last GC from Big Bang pours there slightly and the one from AI Random is now just a little bit more advanced but being supported by Loyalists from Big Bang now using Wrecked Machines tech there and he's on the ACU of Clinch now Clinch in dire, dire trouble and Clinch OCing the GC with some Percivals coming in to aid the shields holding really well there on Clinch's ACU and the GC now down to a third of health the Percivals continue to do their thing and Clinch just trying to get away and now turning around assuming rebuild his power and he's getting in those OCs the shields are down his ACU's down to half health but the GC goes down just in time Clinch there expertly judged that situation fantastic little pullback there with the ACU allowed the Percival's just to wear it down enough allowed his power reserves to regenerate slightly and then turning around and giving a few OCs to the face and that finishes off the last GC and if Clinch can recover from this we already see another GC here and it's pushing forward it's already down to half health less than half health um, Clinch not looking like he's rebuilt enough Percival's here to deal with this and this GC continuing to push forward and apply pressure onto Clinch's court base Clinch has done really well in this game but uh, struggling now with Clinch again moving his ACU in but his shields haven't regenerated and Clinch as well as he did to overcharge the last GC and as well as he timed it he did everything perfectly that was horrendous Clinch completely misjudging everything pushing in his ACU assumingly not to commit suicide but assumingly to OC this rampageous GC as we see it burning along and uh, completely misjudging that <laughs> Clinch with uh, an eventful death it has to be said and uh, the resulting air battle now between AI and Sid looks like it's going to go the way of uh, AI looks like pretty tidy micro from both players I mean anything's tidy when it's me <laughs> when it's me judging the micro everything looks like it's good micro when you've got micro as bad as mine uh, but uh, AI that winning that air battle only just it has to be said but a win is a win and we see that Sid getting some mercies up he is just gonna try and mercy spam this GC to death probably and we see that GC now uh, on its fourth level of veterancy deep deep into the red on hit points but with uh, pretty pretty chunky regeneration on the GC now and he's just bringing that back to secure the right hand area and allow AI some protection as he expands into the newly vacated space or at least that's the idea but Sid's got different ideas with these mercies continuing to come in on the GC oh we've got GC we've got yet another GC here marching into the base of Foden and Foden's base looks like it's about to go poof Foden trying to use some T1 bombers here the GC just crossing the range of oblivion turrets from Sid but the GC not slowing down barely into half health and it looks like he's gonna just try and take out this fire base of Sid before he continues and Sid's ACU marching forward overcharging the GC it is under shield cover there's frantic attack pings going out on the SMD of little Sid 
So that tells me that someone's built a nuke and I'm going to have to check that out shortly and sit there doing a tidy tidy job of taking yet another GC out. There's a little bit of pausing going on here, I'm not quite sure what's going on. But uh, Sid also now starting a Tsar build. And I thought the Tsar build was curious, but uh, uh, looking pretty even, I guess. So maybe that Tsar could do something. And I'm just looking down here and we see the nuke from AI, as I alluded to, as I deduced just a moment ago. And he does have a nuke in the tube here. AI holding a nuke in the tube. Where is he going to fire it? That's why he was frantically pinging that SMD. He would have loved to take out all this here and cripple AI, uh, cripple Sid and by extension Team 1. I'm just looking to see if we got any other SMD on the map. We do have an SMD down here in Foden's base. But it's not loaded and that's exactly where the nuke's being chucked at. So AI deciding that Foden's SMD might not be loaded. He is 100% correct in that assumption. Foden's SMD about 60-65% loaded. It isn't going to load in time. And Foden's core base. Look at all the T3 power that's about to go up in a big nuclear plume of dust. And actually the nuke only taking out one of those T3 power generators. So... Foden will perhaps take solace in that. Uh, a fat boy about two thirds done now from Foden as well, coincidentally. And I'm just now looking at uh, Bob's base to see if he's got an SMD. Bob does have an SMD and it is loaded. So excellent choice of target there from AI Random. If he'd gone for Sid, it would have been shot down. If he'd gone for Bob, it may have been shot down. It may have got through. We'll never quite know. But uh, yes, Foden taking that nuclear bomb to the face. Uh, by the way, that was not uh, Foden's core base area. It looked like a core base area. Obviously, that was the space vacated by Luca about two billion years ago. And uh, Foden's core base with his... Oh, he doesn't have his HQ there. So that nuke looks like it did take out the T3 HQ of Foden. I was just correcting myself, but it was actually right the first time. And now we see another tirade of GCs being thrown forward by Big Bang. And Big Bang here has a full-scale production line of GCs. The Aeon Republic selling more GCs to Big Bang than what Ford sell in the United States of America in pickup trucks. And here we see the latest three off the production line marching towards Foden's base. And Foden, well if he took solace in keeping those three, uh, two T3 power generators early on, He's not going to take much solace for much longer and we see this fat boy from, from Foden. It's been trying to kite these GCs for about 10 miles. <laughs> but uh, it's run out of map to kite into and the GC now catching it up. And that uh, fat boy is going to go down. But we do see a countering GC being thrown down by Sid. And I did see a completion notification coming up. And there it is, the Tsar moving in now. The Tsar moving in and we see the pool of ASF from AI Random getting a clean sweep in. Oh, Sid, that was a little bit slow. Sid not protecting his Tsar with his ASF. And that Tsar living about 10 seconds. Doing next to nothing in its very short life. All because Sid left his ASF on the ground. An AI random was like a whipping up a drain pipe with his ASF. He was straight on the Tsar. One clean pass and the second half pass was enough. And the GC spam continues. 
One of the GCs going down to the Ravagers being thrown up by Bulletproof. And the remaining, the remaining ones now cutting on the inside. And we see one that's got all the way on the inside here. And it's just exchanging. It's exchanging. It's having a staring competition with another GC. But uh, the GC of Big Bang, the winner. And Foden, Foden through this ACU, his left shield cover. But uh, Big Bob, Big Bang, Big Bob. <laughs> and Foden is going to go down here. He's still got OC, but he's got no power generation. And Mercy is going in on the GC from Sid, but it's not going to be enough. Foden shields are down. The GC is deep in the red, but Foden is going to be red and dead sooner. And we do see the GC there going down just after the ACU of Foden. Sid was trying frantically there to spam that GC with Mercy's to keep Foden alive. And Bob here, Bob's out with his own ACU on a walk. It's like, it's like the Crusaders of GC, ACU GC murderers. Apparently, T1's only GC defense is to use their commanders to overcharge them. <laughs> and Bob, withdrawing into his base, having gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with the GC and lived to tell the tale. And he's like, yeah, that was easy. I don't know what all the fuss is about. A couple of OCs in the face and it died. What's the big deal? <laughs> and Bob now, having completed a fat boy, and the, the T4 melee is relentless and as soon as we see those GCs at the front line being eventually torn apart and we've just got a, a, a random lone brick of Big Bang here in the back of Sid's base. Sid's still producing mercies just to kill random shit around the map. But uh, more GCs coming in here. Another one being sent forward by AI Random. The latest one off the Big Bang production line is about three quarters finished. Uh, I say the latest one. We also we already see another two from Big Bang being pulled at the front lines. I'm going to have to check the experimental stats after this match because I've lost count of how many fucking GCs have been in this game. I'm bulletproof here deciding that actually there's half of the map that's uh, up for grabs i'm going to send my fat boy over and just put the pressure on ai's expansion <coughs> so bob apparently deciding that uh, actually team one are okay holding against the gc spam of team two feeling that he's actually got a spare fat boy to push up onto the right hand side and pressure the expansion of AI and we also see a fat boy here it was momentarily firing on the engineers sucking up the wreck of this saw something I would definitely recommend doing and very nicely there just taking out those engineers from AI which were sucking on all sorts of T4 wrecks that those sick bastards and we now see two GC's moving in for a staring competition with another GC of Big Bang and I'm pretty sure we know who's gonna win here it is the brothers of Big Red which will prevail but look at that <laughs> we've got <laughs> oh, this is absolutely crazy and those two GC's which were outnumbering the one of team two are now outnumbered three to two themselves but uh, parashields being thrown forward here and Bob there was very crafty in sending a shield upgraded support commander blocking momentarily trying to give these GC's of Sid an advantage but uh, the numbers of GC's now being sent forward by team 2 just seems like it's too much Bob trying to kite with fat boys, Sid trying to throw up GCs, but Sid seems unable to keep up with the pace of production being amassed by Big Bang.
we continue to see Ravager Fire, GC Rays, and Fat Boy Artillery Suppression coming in on GCs being sent forward by Big Bang. And this time exchanging with a Rambo Com of Bulletproof there. And the Rambo Com and the Ravagers gonna finish that, fat, uh, that GC off. And we just see overhead there another Tsar being thrown up by Sid. This time Sid with his ASF out front and center protecting or trying to protect the Tsar. But again with some tidy micro from random sidestepping the ASF of Sid getting in behind and already taking this Tsar into the red. And before Sid can reposition his ASF to fend off the ASF of AI. <laughs> the Tsar was finished off, but the Tsar having the audacity to land on the ACU of Big Bang, taking Big Bang into the red there. That would have been hilarious. And we've got, is that TML? I think that's TML. And we've got TML there from Sid. Mass TML there being thrown forward here. And I don't actually know if those TML weren't aimed at Big Bang. So potentially, I'm not sure here. But if that Tsar hadn't have landed on the ACU of Big Bang, Big Bang may have not moved his ACU. And those, and those TML may have been destined for Big Bang's ACU, so inadvertently, ironically perhaps, that Tsar could have perhaps saved Big Bang's life there. That is nothing short of speculation, but that's that's what possibly may have just been averted. And we see here an emissary now being thrown up by Big Bang. We saw in last week's replay when Scarlet got an emissary up, how that affected the game. Devastating these things can be. And again, I don't like the T3 power adjacency on T3 and T4 artillery pieces. They're just too hard to shield, in my opinion. But what do I know? I'm a shitty 1100. Bob now pulling up two fat boys and they're just gonna push forward and clear out this expansion. AI stashing a couple of counter GCs on the right, but I wouldn't put them that far forward unless you were going to try and run those fat boys down. And we see more TML coming in from Sid, and Big Bang has been frantically chucking up some TMD in reply quite effectively, it looks like. And little Sid hasn't even reverted to taking out T3 Maxes yet. He probably knows it's pointless given the pure scale of Big Bang's economy having inherited the base of Wrecked as well and if we just we may as well just take a quick look there and we see Big Bang topping the charts on Eco there Bob just moving momentarily to the top that was definitely reclaim related but Big Bang currently in first spot with 107 sorry 571 Mass income per tick, AI random in second place with 406, and Sid in third with 297. Sid has had to contend with a lot getting around the back of his base, and also has not been allowed to expand into this vacant left hand area to build up his eco like we see AI random has been allowed to do on the right hand side. So we're at two versus two, and right now, Team 2 with the mass, the sheer mass of GC spam being thrown forward. We have a completed emissary now on the field for Team 2. And things looking a bit sketchy for Team 1. They've not got really a lot to defend against this emissary. I mean, all you can do is build shields, really, if you can't kill it. And Bob now pushing down on the bottom left, driving down, harassing this GC from distance. And that is so that is so annoying when you've put all the time and effort into building a GC and you can't even fire the bloody thing because you got fat boys chasing it down. 
and we see there are attack pings going out on the fat boys of Bob but uh, team 2 they've got no T2 artillery up, they've got no gunships, no strats so they're gonna struggle in dealing with these fat boys if if Bob can keep up with the micro on them we see here GC's trying to get in and flank the fat boys now and one of them has got to be just a, just getting in range of firing and there we go we see it opening up on the fat boy there and could Bob have been caught there napping just a little bit the shields drop and once the shields are down it's soft and fleshy and one fat boy down Sid moves in a GC of his own with a second upcoming so this one forward from Big Bang probably won't last too much longer but we got two more coming across from AI Random how many experimentals are in this replay it is absolutely fucking crazy look at look at all the wrecks there's so many T4 wrecks they can't even reclaim them quick enough And we just see that more GCs going into staring competitions in the distance. That we see a, a GC going into a, a staring competition with a Rambo support commander from Bob. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? Just that little thing there, that speck going toe to toe with the GC. And it's trying to move around the back now. I'll go out and get a better view. And it's trying to move around the back of this GC to avoid the cannon. And another GC buys the dust. Aeon Republic making making billions here from the sales of GCs to Sid and Big Bang and AI in this replay. And yet another two coming forward. This time it's Sid on the offensive on behalf of Team One. And this really is the first time that Team One are going to cross the halfway line of the map onto the opponent's half. And they've got two GCs, three fat boys, a few sprinkling of Rambo comms. We saw a nuke there, a nuke going out from AI Random. It's targeting the fat boys in the middle. Not particularly good placement of the nuke, I don't think. It might take out... Oh, but Bob turning around that fat boy there and... How many fat boys is Bulletproof going to lose on this nuke? Two fat boys there. To be fair, Bob and Sid splitting up their experimentals pretty nicely there. It was never going to take out more than two. And now, Team 1 having looked like that they were not going to get the win out of the bag on this one bearing down on the base of Big Bang Big Bang's ACU just at the top here trying to clamber out of the mass packing of engineers and let's just jump into bulletproof here I don't know if they can see the ACU they can see the ACU they've got clear vision here on Big Bang's ACU and Sid I think he's going for the T3 power of Big Bang here with this GC. We see the Rambo comms coming in. T3 power goes down. A chain reaction on the shields goes up as well. And the Rambo comms opening up on the ACU of Big Bang. Big Bang is going down quickly here. Support fire coming in from the Fat Boys from distance. And let's go back into Observer. And Big Bang, 4,000 hit points left. And the and the support commanders get him he's gone down big bang has gone up in a bang <laughs> and uh, I paused in the confusion there because of course the the ACU of wrecked machines was still alive and that just confused me momentarily but uh, a great like I said a few minutes ago this is literally the first time in the match that Team 1 have crossed the halfway line and they've grabbed the win here this Tsar and 
the Rambo comms from Bob with the supporting artillery fire of the Fat Boys have been absolutely devastating. Team 1 coming forward once, but once is enough if you get the critical kills. And AI Random now standing still, turning around, marching into the fire, accepting his fate like a man. And wow. AI Random there. An excellent performance, really, I think, from AI Random. I mean, I was expecting Sid to absolutely chop this guy up and eat him in small parcels for breakfast. But uh, AI Random doing a pretty stellar job in air, considering the difference in ranking between he and his mirror was 700 points. So, Team One there coming out on top on a absolute spam fest of T4 units there. Um, Bob and Sid seeing this over the line on behalf of Team One. What a... Wow. I almost clicked on restart replay there. Let's watch it again. <laughs> and AR Random with one kill. Lil Sid with one kill. Bulletproof there claiming two kills. Uh, probably those kills were um, Big Bang and Wrecked Machines. Uh, Big Bang himself getting two kills and Clinch with those very useful kills. I also thought Clinch played really well in this match considering he was against a superior opponent absolutely wiping the floor with Okpuk within inside 10 minutes on this replay. So let's just go ahead and take a look at the stuff. And Lil Sid winning two out of four categories, mass income and stuff built. The other categories... Um, Big Bang going to kills, getting kills there. 712 kills for Big Bang. Not really surprising considering the fleet of GCs that Big Bang amassed in that match. And the final category of power production going to AI Random. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, where's the thing I'm looking for? Units. And in terms of experimentals here, look at the experimentals produced in this map 37 experimentals produced in this map guys absolutely incredible 11 experimentals from big bang all of them were gc's i think uh, nine experimentals produced by bob all of them were fat boys uh, nine from sid that was a mixture of gc's and czars i ai random again all gc's and clinch I'm not actually sure what experimentals clinch got up. Hmm. Curious. Anyway, I thoroughly enjoyed that replay, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will catch you in the next one.